Hey guys, Slender here. Welcome back to another Cyberpunk 2077 guide video. In this one, we're going over all 54 iconic weapons and armor locations in Cyberpunk. There are 46 unique secret missable weapons in the game, 8 unique armors, and 1 car. It's a bit of a complicated guide, and all but 3 of the 54 are missable, so make sure to be careful about going too far ahead. But you should know the video does contain spoilers. Next, it's impossible to collect every item. Some uniques are tied to your background or gender. However, in order to get the most unique items, playing as a female street kid will offer the most possible options. Lastly, there are quite a few bugged like Second Chance and the Tinkerbell weapons, but I'll go over them anyway, and some other unique items not listed in the 54. In total, we have 21 iconic weapons to collect from the main story, 23 from side jobs, 8 from hustles, and 2 from gigs. Nine of the weapons need to be crafted as well, so your attack skill needs to be level 18 to get a couple of them. And last but not least, I will go over the Johnny Silverhand items in the video as well. So let's jump into it. The first step is to do the main missions 1 to 7 and stop after you complete the ride mission. Mission 8 is complex, but there is one unique from side jobs we can get before we start that. To get the Fenrir unique, head to the Northside docks in Watson and find the monk to get the side job, Sacrum Profanum. You're tasked with finding the monk's brother, head to the location and kill the Maelstrom soldiers and rescue the monk. The Fenrir SMG is sitting on a table next to him. Next, start mission number 8, the pickup, and call Meredith. In this mission, there are three possible uniques tied to it, Boom Boom, Falistiff, and Chaos, but you can't get all of them in this one playthrough. You can either get Boom Boom or Chaos, depending whether you side with Militech or Maelstrom, and you can't get the Falistiff unless you play as a male character, because you have to romance Meredith Stout. But since there are more uniques tied to playing as a female character, and since we don't need the Falistiff because we're playing as a female, then we're going to not side with Meredith, we're going to side with Maelstrom, and we will get the Boom Boom, but we won't get it till later in the video. So option number one is for you to play a male character, and you can side with Militech. To do this, you need to conflict with Maelstrom and kill Royce. All you have to do is, during the mission, you can shoot Royce, or you can give him the infected cred chip, but not tell him that it's bugged, and then you can fight and kill him, and you can loot the chaos from his body. After this, you will be able to romance Meredith, at which point you can get the Sir John Falstaff weapon from her. Option number two is the one that I'm going for, playing as a female character and siding with Maelstrom. This will give you the best results for the most uniques. So in this scenario, you must side with Maelstrom, get the infected chip from Meredith Stout, and it's important that you remove the infected malware and during the sequence to buy the flathead with the infected chip, you can warn Royce it's infected. This will trigger a Militech attack and keep Royce and dumb them alive. There is a warning here to make a save because during the next sequence, you need to make sure that dum dum survives the Militech attack as he shows up in a later mission where you get the unique Boom Boom weapon. Since you're not siding with Miltech as well, you can also play as a female character in this scenario and you will get the Mox weapon later on when you romance Judy. Okay, so after that you can continue on and finish the mission, then go on to finish mission number 9, the information, and you can start mission 10, the heist. And there are four uniques linked to this quest. So you can start the mission and you don't actually have to do anything until you reach Yori Nobu's apartment. Next to his bed, you will find the unique Kangu pistol. After the sequence in the apartment, you need to escape and the balcony doors will be unlocked. But before you do any of that, head up the stairs in the apartment to the landing pad to find the unique Katana Satori. Lastly, there are two future unique weapons linked to Jackie. It's important when asked to send his body back that you pick to send it to his family as this will unlock two missions later on. Now before you start mission number 12, there are quite a few weapons we can pick up from side quests and others, so don't start mission number 12 yet, we will go on to that later. After Dex is killed, he can be looted for his unique weapon plan B, it's located in the scrapyard that you can see on the map. Go to the afterlife bar after main mission 10 and talk to Dennis to start the big in Japan quest. The unique scalpel weapon is given as a reward for completing the quest. 
Next, we can get the La Chingona Dorada. However, this is only available if you chose to send Jackie's body back to his family, as we mentioned earlier, after mission number 10, the heist. To start the mission, call Mama Wells and simply follow the mission through until you get to Jackie's tribute and complete the mission. After the mission, completely leave the area by fast traveling and then you can fast travel right back and the weapons will be located on the altar in the bar. The Dynamite Pistol can be picked up from the Second Amendment in your apartment building. However, this is not the full weapon. Later on in the story, Wilson will call you to do the mission Shoot to Thrill. If you get first place in the shooting contest, you don't need 100 out of 100 by the way, then you will get a full upgrade for the gun, turning it into an automatic pistol with a sight. To get the Divided We Stand SMG, head to Rancho Coronado and start the side job Stadium Love, available after mission number 11. The job requires you to talk to the boss and say you're looking for some fun and you enter into shooting contest and you have to get all 44 targets awarded to get the Divided We Stand gun. However, if you do fail this and you want the gun, then you can kill everyone and just loot it that way. But it is going to be a tough fight. Next, this is a strange one, an AI gun called Skippy that you can find and keep for yourself. But also you can choose to return the gun to its owner. And if you keep this unique weapon, the quest will remain unfinished. To get Skippy, head to this map location in Vista del Rey and pick him up. Okay, we can move on to do mission number 12 now, Automatic Love. Play through the mission until you enter the cloud bar, make your way through the mission until the final restricted area, and the unique cocktail sword is located in the first room on the left. At the end of the mission, make sure not to kill Woodsman. There's also another unique weapon that's supposed to be in this quest, that's called Second Chance. It's located in the room next to Woodsman's. However, the door is locked. We do go into that room later on, but again, the weapon is not there. Okay, after this mission is finished and you leave the Clouds Club, Johnny will interact with you coming out of the elevator. It's really important that you talk to him to start the side job tapeworm, and that's needed for unique weapons, quite a few of them later on. Although it's not too difficult to miss this because he's right there. All you have to do is, during the tapeworm missions, make sure that you keep the conversation going and don't end it early. Again, I will let you know as we come across these tapeworm dialogues later in the video. Okay, from here you can continue on and complete the next quest, The Space In Between. During the quest, Cottonmouth is found in Finger's bedroom. And after you deal with the doctor and find out where Evelyn is, you can pick up the unique iconic club from his bed. And after the mission, you're free to do the next couple of missions, Disaster Peace and Double Life. After mission 15, Double Life, you can head to Lizzie's bar and pick up the Lizzie unique iconic weapon. This is one of the few that's not actually missable. You can pick it up anytime after mission 15, so don't worry about getting it straight away. So guys, at this point, we can start the Romancing Judy questline if you're a female character. So after mission number 15, Double Life, you need to wait 24 hours in game and she will call you. There are three unique weapons tied to this quest line, but only the Mox is missable. So to pass time, I'm doing mission number 16, Mapatan Pelan, 17, I walk the line, and 18, Transmission. And there are no unique weapons linked to these quests, so you're free to do those. And while you're doing them, at some point, Judy should call you. And of course, it's important to answer the phone when she does call. And that will start the side mission both sides now. If she doesn't call, make sure to just drive around the Badlands for a while. That worked for me. Important note for the end of Mission 18 Transmission. At the end, when you leave the chapel, there is your second conversation with Johnny for the tapeworm quest. So make sure again that you talk to him and keep the conversation going to the end and don't finish the conversation early. So after the transmission mission and you've got the both sides now quest from Judy, you can complete that and then start the next one, X Factor. Now during the X Factor quest, this is the place where you can get into Mako's office to find the second chance weapon. Again, it's not there for me and it's not there for anyone else to be honest. So it is bugged, but this is exactly where it's supposed to be. So maybe they will fix it in the future. Continue on to the next Judy side quest, talking about a revolution, and then you can start the Pisces mission. Play through the Pisces mission all the way to the end until Hiromi is killed, and you can pick up the unique blade from his body. 
This might be optional, but to be certain when picking options, make sure to side with Mako and select Hiromi has to go and Mako will run things from now on. I'm not sure if it makes a difference because I haven't played multiple ways, but just to be sure you can pick those options and you will get the sword. Also at the end of this, it's important as well when you talk to Mako that you don't accept payment for helping her or else you won't be able to romance Judy. After the Pisces mission, Judy will call and you can play through the final Judy romance mission, Pyramid Song, in which you will get a couple of iconic things. The neoprene diving suit, which is yours to keep and equip whenever you want, and the iconic Mox weapon. However, the Mox weapon won't actually show up at the end of this mission. It will be after you complete it and then you will have to wait for Judy to send you around four text messages. It will actually take quite a long time in game probably two or three hours of actual game time. But when she does text you, make sure you text her back and then eventually she will mention that she has a Mox shotgun for you or she has a surprise for you left in her apartment and then you can pick that up. At this point in the story then, if you're playing Corpo, you can play the mission War Pigs. I didn't get this one because I'm playing Street Kid. It's one of the only ones that I don't have. But it's important that when you're playing the mission to attack Frank in the mission, as the unique apparition weapon is located from his body. Another weapon we can get after mission 18 transmission is called Ozob's Nose. Call Ozob on your phone to start the mission Send in the Clowns. After completing the mission you will get the Ozob's Nose unique item which is a grenade. If it's bug like it is for me you can still craft it in the crafting menu if you have enough points in your tech tree. Okay, now we're going to do a lot more main story to unlock most of the side jobs that are remaining for Uniques. During mission 19 Ghost Town, you help Pan Am get back her car, after which you get revenge by killing Nash. If you agree to help Pan Am do so, then you will kill Nash, you can loot his body for the unique weapon Widowmaker. After mission 19, you're free to start mission 20 Lightning Breaks, mission 21 Life During Wartime, Make sure at the end of mission 21 that you talk to Johnny Silverhand again for the tapeworm mission. Then start and complete mission 22 down on the street. And our next unique comes from mission 23, Give Me Danger. During mission 23, Give Me Danger, you are tasked to find the float at the Arasaka warehouse. However, before you go inside, on the outside of the loading bay, there is a shipping container numbered 667 that houses the unique Shingen Mark V legendary iconic weapon. During mission 24, play it safe, there are two unique weapons to get. The first during the mission is the Genjiro. On your way to kill the second sniper, just as you come out of the elevator on floor 21, just before the ladder, there is a door that can be opened with the right skill, or you can use the terminal code 2906. The unique weapon is inside of there. The second weapon, Jinchu Maru, is dropped by the boss Oda at the end of the mission. Okay, now you can go ahead and play the final mission, number 25, Search and Destroy. And whatever you do guys, do not start mission number 26, as that's the point of no return. We're going to collect a bunch of uniques from the point of no return missions, but before we do that, we're going to collect everything that's remaining. At the very end of the mission 25 as well, you can talk to Johnny for the final time to finish the quest tapeworm. At the end of the quest, Johnny's unique tank top is given to you automatically. After this quest, you start the job chipping in, and there are four different items to get from this one quest, and a dialogue option important for some future items. So start the job chipping in, and after completing tapeworm, Play the mission's first part where Johnny takes control while riding in a car and you will automatically pick up Johnny's aviators, so you can't really miss that. 
Later in the mission, you meet Rogue at Afterlife for the next part of the mission, and when you leave to get in her car, she will give you Johnny's Samurai Jacket, which comes equipped nice. with also a unique bully mod. Near the end of the mission, you will fight Grayson. After he is defeated, he will have Johnny's unique weapon on him called yeah, the Malorian Arms 3516. Grayson. Lastly, when prompted to choose to save Grayson's life, be sure to say it's your lucky day and he will give you the keys to a container. The container has Johnny's portion side, which is now yours to keep. One final thing to note here is at the back of the ship on the opposite side where Grayson is that there is a room that is Adam Smasher's vault. You can hack the door to get inside and inside is where you will get the weapon blueprint Ba Jing Chong. However, this is currently bugged for me and you can't actually open the case, but that's the location of where you get that weapon. At the end of chipping in mission at the oil fields, Johnny asks you what would you write on his headstone? It's important that when you answer, you have to pick the option, the guy who saved my life, or the next eight Johnny side missions, starting with blistering love won't be available and you will miss quite a few uniques if you don't do that. After chipping in, if you've selected all the right options, you can then complete Blistering Love and the mission after that, Holding On. Then start the second conflict where there are two uniques tied to this mission. Play through the second conflict mission until you arrive at the Totentans Club. If you sided with Dum Dum and Royce during mission 8, they will be here during this mission. While in the club, you agree to help Nancy get out but choose not to do so without a fight. This will trigger a fight with the Maelstrom, including Dum Dum, who you can kill and loot for the Doom Doom weapon. Next, follow the mission until near the end where you reach Danny's mansion. You must choose to side with Danny or Carrie. Choose Danny and the mission will end with her throwing the baseball bat in the pool and you can pick up this unique gold baseball bat. Fuck. Now I gotta find someone to clean this up. Okay, about all we can do for a Like Supreme is playable after the second conflict quest is finished, where you perform in a concert. After the gig, Carrie will give you the unique Archangel weapon. After A Like Supreme, you can move on to a new side mission where we will be romancing River. So go ahead and start the side mission I Fought the Law, and this will unlock the next mission where we have a unique weapon to collect in The Hunt. During The Hunt mission, play all the way until you arrive at the Edgewood Farms. The tree next to the house has a Tinkerbell weapon underneath it, however it is currently bugged in my game, so I can't pick it up. Now an important point during this mission in order to get the next unique, at the very end of the mission where River says he wants revenge, make sure to select either Don't Do It River or We'll Both Get Revenge Together in order to unlock his romance mission where you will get the final weapon. So after that mission is complete, you can play through the Follow the River mission where at the very end you will get the Crash Pistol. After main mission 21, Life During Wartime, you can start the side job Riders in the Storm. During the mission, you need to go to the ship camp to rescue Saul. One of the enemy wraiths guarding the camp's main entrance has the Problem Solver weapon, or two in my case, and you can loot that from him. And the Overwatch sniper rifle is given to you after you rescue Saul and complete the mission. Also, you can pick up the SR2 legendary rifle blueprint next to Saul when you rescue him. It's not unique, but it's right there. After Riders in the Storm is complete, you will unlock the next mission with a little help from my friends. There's no unique in this mission, but there is an important dialogue choice. During the mission when you're in the tower, Make sure when Panam asks you that you say that you're not doing this for money. After the with a little help from my friends quest, just to the south of the nomads camp you can trigger a new quest, I'll fly away, which doesn't show up on the map until you get close to it. It's important that you start this quest before doing the Queens of the Highway mission or else it will disappear. Complete the quest to get this unique stinger weapon. Hey Mitch, you doing okay? Go on, it's yours. What is it? Not a clue. Scorpion always had it on him. No idea why. Lastly, if you've done everything right and you have all the dialogue choices, then you are free to complete the Queen of the Highway mission. And this is an important mission to do because we will need it for later on when we do some of the end game missions. 
After completing side job 10, Heroes, which is only available if you send Jackie's body back to his family during the heist mission, Kirk will call you at some point for a new mission called Small Man Big Mouth. It's a mission you can get much earlier on in the story, but the enemies are a very high level, so it would be tough to complete before now. During the mission, you can pick up the fake Samurai Jacket. Now, it's supposed to be a unique, but it doesn't show that in-game. However, it's still worth picking it up, just in case it's a bug. But also, it kind of looks cool. Next, in Haywood, start the gig Psycho Fan and search Carrie's bedroom to find Johnny's pants inside of a suitcase. Our last Johnny Silverhand item is to get Johnny's shoes, and you will get this by starting the family heirloom gig in Charter Hills in Westbrook. The mission won't unlock until you've completed the blistering love side quest, which if you're following the guide you should have already done, and reached street cred level 38. If the mission doesn't show up for you, and it didn't for me, because I got this mission much later on than I'm showing you in this video, then make sure to call Rogue and do all of her dialogue choices and then go to the actual location where the family heirloom starts and she should call you after that. During the mission the shoes are located in a locker next to the car that you need to collect. So guys the next bunch of uniques are all from NDPC Hustles. Find the gang, kill the leader and you will get the unique weapon blueprint from them to loot. The buzzsaw weapon is located in the NCDP Hustle in Watson. The Sam 11 6 is also located in Watson, but you have to make sure that you complete the buzzsaw mission first in order for it to show up. Sovereign is located in Japantown. Headsman will be found in the NCDP hustle in Westbrook. The Moron Lab is in Pacifica. Breakthrough is located in Santa Domingo. The second one located in Santo Domingo is the Comrade's Hammer. Yinlong is found in Haywood.
Our very last item to get before the last main mission uniques is the 05, given for completing the very first side job you come across, beat on the brat started in your apartment building. It's a tough mission and technically you can start this much earlier than now if you want to, but the chances of actually beating these guys earlier in the game is really unlikely. In fact, you will probably struggle right now, so if you want to cheat like I did, then you can just drop a bat or any weapon on the ground before you start this mission, and you can use that to fight and kill these enemies much easier. In order to get the 05 weapon, you have to talk to Arnold in Santa Domingo. You have to have the right skills as well, and you can get him to put his sniper rifle, the 05, in as the bet. After you defeat him, you can kill all these people, and then you can loot the new sniper rifle. So guys, that leaves us with the five uniques to collect from missions after the point of no return, and there are two options here, to side with Pan Am or with Rogue. Don't worry though, you get to keep any uniques that you get after the point of no return, and they will stay in your inventory when you restart the game after the credits. There's also a couple of unique items in the final missions, but you don't get to keep them, like the Retro Thrusters, which is a shame, and the spacesuit as well. So we're going to start by siding with Pan Am. During mission 26 Nocturne, if you've completed the Queen of the Highway mission, you can side with Pan Am. Doing so will unlock the We Gotta Live Together mission, and during this, you will get the Aldo Caldo's jacket awarded to you by Saul after talking to the people in the camp. After this, you can talk to the people again. You talk to Mitch, who will take you out in a tank, then go back and talk to Saul, and this will finally unlock the ability to talk to Cassidy, where you will have to take part in a bottle shooting contest to win the Amnesty Pistol. What kind of machinery have you got in there? You should be giving me lessons. Fine shooting, kid. The trick is to hear silence in your mind at the bank. Learn something after all. Let this be a reminder to you. Thanks, Cass. You earned it. So from this point, go ahead and finish the game. And when it asks you to reload into the game, you will start back at the very beginning of Nocturne and then you are free to start all over again. But this time we're going to side with Rogue. If you've completed the mission Blistering Love, then you can choose the option to have Johnny and Rogue go to Arasaka Tower and you will start the mission Whom the Bell Toll. Before leaving for Arasaka Tower, you're arming up. Here you can pick up the Pride Weapon and the Retro Thusters. In the next mission, after you crash your AV, as soon as you stand up, you'll be able to find the caretaker shovel. Guards. Occupied at the turn. Slip and buy is an option, and so is taken. Lastly, at the end of the mission, you can loot Rogue's weapon prejudice. And of course, right at the very end, if you choose to restore V back to her body, you will get to see the spacesuit. So guys, that is it for this very long guide on how to get as many as the unique weapons, iconic weapons, in Cyberpunk 2077. Some are bugged, you can't get all of them in one playthrough because of various choices. Some are tied to male or female, some are tied to whether you're corporate or street kid, but you should have over 50 if you've followed this guide. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more similar guides on Cyberpunk and other future games as well. Leave a comment below about anything to do with the video. Have an awesome day and I will see you guys next time.